Hello my friends, welcome back. It is episode 24. Do you know what's sad? I think there's no... There's no KV-1s in range of this surrender tank anymore. And I was so looking forward to getting some more. Although, I don't know if they're that good. I think the KV-140 is broadly inferior to tanks I already have, I think. What a funny little tank. Shame it's useless. Yeah, the KV-1's got like slightly better... It's got better movement and slightly better tank pen. The trade-off is the loss of defense and infantry attack. I don't know, I guess the KV-1 is actually potentially better, but... I think compared to the 3H, they're not that good. You have to remember, the 3H only costs three slots, not five. So you're getting one less point of attack there. Okay, I mean, it has its... it definitely has its place. Something to think about. Right, first things first. These three planes are now in range of a very, very angry fire plane. And of course, this is a tactical pretending to be a fire. I'm just doing as much damage as possible here because I will take the airports and uh, that will be the end. For them. Okay, once again, everything is set up for the kill here. Okay, we didn't miss this time. He's dead. I wonder if I can just make him surrender traditionally without using the surrender tank. Six. This is the one with shock tactics, unfortunately, and it's wrecked. And honestly, for safety's sake, I'd better repair it, even though we're right near the end of the mission. Just in case it gets bombed or something goes wrong. Um... Oh, he's just out of... he's just out of strat range. Got envelopment here, but I don't know if that's really going to help me any. Uh, okay. Okay, he's ready to surrender if he gets poked. Okay, not bad. Obviously, not as good as if I'd used the old surrender machine for it, but you use what you have, not what you wish you had. Ah, there is one up there. Oh, he's just out of range.
these airports are actually undefended, which is amazing. Okay. I think he could reach one, two, three, four, five. Five, but I've got Master of Blitzkrieg, so I should have six. So, I just have to get this guy to move. Are any of my bombers in range of this thing? You can reach, right? There we go. nearly kill him there. Sit him with the KV. Can always self-repair the damage later. Yes! 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 Gonk. Now it's time for the world's most evil shredder of everything. 10 out of 10. Um. Ten out of ten entrenchment there. Wow, look at that. All it took was one hit. He's in a close combat tile. So I might be able to delete him with infantry next turn. Ah, stop clicking on that stupid thing. Uh, I'm just wondering whether there's anything there. Although I think even in artillery mode I wouldn't actually reach, so let's not worry about that. Wow, I found his off switch, Jesus. I'm gonna say, hit him with this. Then, hmm, I can reach, but I can't really do anything. I suppose I'll just lock him in for now. Yep, nothing to do. Or nothing to see here. Oh, these guys have got cheap replacements, so I might as well just do the replacements now. They will self-repair. I don't know if I want to shuffle my repair heroes around. Only for the only for the anti-aircraft guns, really, because they, I still I have nothing to replace them. 
And I don't know when the Germans unlock anything better. Yep, we're clear. Man, this thing is such a beast. Such a beast. Beast of a machine. Okay, it's gonna be a rebase rebase strike next turn. Wow, that was uh <laughs> that was something. Okay, that's actually a 15 centimeter gun. I wouldn't mind capturing that. Although, uh, I have to get rid of that last teeny bit of... Oh, this KV-2 doesn't have self... wait. Doesn't have self-repair? Oh, of course it does. Wait. I'm actually hugely confused here. I thought all my KVs had self-repair. Yep, so that one has self-repair. So does this one. Why have the heroes disappeared? Oh, they're back. Okay, it's just the game being weird. Surrender time, boys. Right, let's rebase, rebase strike these two down. You know, this, this guy needs air kills, right? Sucks to be you. Man, I can see this thing just being a monster by the end of this campaign. Get out. Okay, I think I officially now control the spice and therefore the universe. And all that's left is for my boy here, the Emil, to make a meal out of that guy. Oh, I forgot about that plane. <laughs> I could have shot him down for the kills. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> I forgot about that one floating there. Do you not self-repair if you're not in tank mode? Okay, so that's self-repaired to max. That was never damaged. Uh, I think all of my infantry has also self-repaired. Pretty clean. I mean, there's nothing left to do. I think that these enemy tanks were supposed to be more of a threat than they were. But this monster, this monster beast, just embarrassed them. It barely had enough to attack. Barely had enough. So it just goes to show, when you get yours in your campaign, if you cross-class in a unit that's already earned a few points of anti-tank veteran, that might make the difference for you, but you definitely can just run it as it is, just massively overstrengthed and it's got enough. I have reports for your immediate attention. The evasion has started off excellently. 
All Soviet positions are being overrun. Hundreds, possibly thousands of Soviet aircraft have been destroyed before they could respond. Now we have a moment's pause. Let's go over our last change of orders. Seems like Hand Command is a very special assignment for us. They want your forces to ride the line between Army Group North and Army Group Center. This will allow us to maintain a high degree of autonomy and allow us to respond to hot spots. The more we assist, our, assist Army Group North, the more rough terrain and close combat battles we should expect. If we switch to aiding Army Group Center, it's much more likely we're seeing battles across a wide open Ukrainian plain. That probably means a lot more encounters with tanks and vehicles. Sweet. Historically, it was the Uber attack. As part of the surprise attack, thousands of Soviet aircraft were destroyed while they were still lined up in their airfields. This overwhelming loss of aircraft quickly allowed Germany and its allies to gain air supremacy in practically every sector of the invasion. Soviet leaders were stunned into inactivity during the opening days of the invasion. There were many local commanders who attempted to organize counterattacks. Major General Yogar Slohyakin's 2nd Tank Division led one such valiant effort. Initially, his heavy tanks were successful in overrunning German vanguard units. But without any co coordinated support, his tanks soon found themselves encircled and assaulted from all sides. He would not survive the Battle of Rasalinani. Rassi... Inai? I? I don't know. Italian. Italians. No, not Italian. Uh, Russian? No. Ukrainian? Where are we right now? <laughs> Somewhere in Russia. This is the name of a town, which I don't know how to pronounce. Sweet. Panzer Combat! That best suits me. That best suits me stealing lots of stuff. I have no idea if this is the optimal choice or not, but it's the it's the path I've chosen. To help facilitate our communications, I'll be needing to spend more time on the field. Lack of infrastructure in these Soviet lands demands no less. To further ease our logistical footprint, we've been assigned a new lieutenant to assist. Hello. Wagner's half track survives. They are heavily engaged near Bialystok. Okay, encircle the enemy here. More Soviet airfields. Specialist units. Mobile constructions will allow you. Mobile construction units will allow you to deploy airbase near any location they can be escorted to. All right. <gasps> Another overwhelming attack hero. Sweet! Oh, the stealing is gonna get... It's gonna get ridiculous now.
they just send me another one of those useless trains. Great. <laughs> I'm so happy. Thank you, guys. Uh, whoop. No, thank you. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Can't. No. Nope. They're garbage. Now, interestingly, um, I do have, and I'm not going to get too much into deployment here, because uh, I think, obviously, there's a lot to think about in terms of deployment. But I do have some spare KV-2s now. So, it is not so critical that I keep my repair heroes on them at all times. Fortunately, we are still very much in the position that this is the best anti-air that I have. Unless I want a slower, weaker... German knockoff of it. I mean, to be fair, in terms of actually hitting aircraft, it's it's no different. It's got the same range initiative and anti-air and it's got double strike. So it's, you know, in that regard, it's the same, but it costs more. It's slower and it is weaker. So... Of course, a KV is actually very, very difficult to destroy, so... Let's temporarily drop our field repairs here, field repair heroes and uh, just stick them on these two. Before I forget. Assuming it ever takes any damage. Okay, alright. The rest is for a deployment episode. So, that is it for now. Um, I'm sure that there's a fair bit of planning that needs to be done here. Capture Bialystok and Granodo before the last victory hex. Grodno? Grodno? Well, the, the victory hexes are all the way over there. Yeah. Okay. We'll give it a think. We'll give it some thoughts. That is it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.